I'll get it done, don't worry. <laughs> Well, good afternoon. <clears throat> Tax cuts are officially here in Massachusetts. The first, the first major tax cuts in over 20 years. It just happened today. They're here for everyone. They're going to save you money in a bunch of ways. Um, and just to, to begin, I want to thank our partners in the legislature who made this happen. Um, House Speaker Ron Mariano, Senate President Karen Spilka, our Ways and Means Chairs, Mayor Michaelwitz and Michael Rodericks. I want to thank them and all the legislators who worked so hard to get these tax cuts over the finish line. Members of our team, the Healy Driscoll team, are here as well. And I begin by thanking our fabulous Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, a longtime champion for working families. Our Secretary of Administration and Finance, Matt Gorkowitz, who along with his team has been working hard on this since we first put a proposal in in February. I also want to take a moment to thank the many individuals, groups, and organizations represented in this room today who advocated for various components of this legislation. And importantly, we're advocating for the people who will now benefit from it. Advocates for children and families, for seniors, you can keep clapping, <laughs> children and families, seniors, small businesses, affordable housing, economic growth, equi economic equity. Also, thank you to our local officials. We could not be here without you and your efforts. As I said, tax cuts are here in Massachusetts. They are here for everyone, and they are going to save you money. In fact, for all the parents and caregivers out there, I want you to know that Massachusetts now has the most generous universal child and dependent care tax credit in the entire country. And, and there's so much more. When we ran for office, we said that making Massachusetts more affordable was one of our key goals, and we have been driving that every day, thinking about ways we could lower costs for families, for seniors, for everyone here in the state. That's because high costs put pressure and stress not only on people today, but also on our dreams for tomorrow. Working parents cut their hours to save on childcare. Recent college grads look outside of Massachusetts for other opportunities. Seniors struggle to stay in their homes. Renters can't save enough for a down payment. Small business owners and farmers can't expand. Everyone feels the pinch and our future starts to shrink. We're in a state whose future depends on the big dreams of our people. It's always been that way in Massachusetts. And as I said at our inauguration, people can't realize their dreams until the nightmare of high costs ends. Since that day, we've been attacking high costs from every angle. Our budget made school meals permanently free for our students to take that stress off families. We expanded access to affordable childcare and preschool. We made community college free for all students 25 years and older through Mass Reconnect. We have new housing investments that will reduce rents and increase home ownership, with more of that to come in the next few weeks. Look, these are all important steps, and we're going to keep building on them. But the one thing that we know, the most direct thing that government can do, is to show that we get it. To show that we get it, and how do you show by you get it? By actually putting money back in people's pockets. To take some of that pain away, to cut taxes, and to deliver. And that's why we can say today, 
Massachusetts tax cuts are here and everyone is going to benefit from them. We're cutting taxes and saving money for all families with children or adult dependents. The child and dependent tax credit will grow from $180 to $310 this year and $440 next year per dependent. And we're eliminating the two-child cap. That's putting hundreds of dollars back in the pockets of families across this state. A family with three children could see their payment grow by nearly $1,000, real money. We're cutting taxes and saving money for seniors, doubling your senior circuit tax credit from $1,200 to $2,400 for our seniors. That's $1,200 more back in the pockets of our seniors. We're cutting taxes and making housing more affordable. We're increasing the cap on rental deduction for all renters. We're dramatically expanding both the HDIP Housing Development Incentive Program for Gateway Cities and the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program for the entire state. That's also going to create thousands of affordable homes. We're also cutting taxes and saving money for commuters by making public transit, regional transit authorities, and bicycle expenses deductible. We're cutting taxes and saving money for small, medium, and large businesses so they can compete better, hire more workers, and invest more in our state, and so much more. Today's tax cuts will make Massachusetts more affordable. They will also make our state more competitive. Keeping more wealth here, stimulating our economy, attracting more investment. They'll make our state more equitable by expanding the earned income tax credit, affordable housing incentives, and much more. The bottom line is this. If you live in Massachusetts, these tax cuts are for you. They are going to help you save money. Starting tomorrow, the Lieutenant Governor and I are going to head out around the state to raise awareness about these tax cuts and to answer questions uh, about them. We know we're going to be talking to and hearing from parents and seniors, small business owners, and folks who are struggling with housing costs. We want to go to the people. We want to go to the people who have told us about the high costs and the pain points that they're experiencing, and we want to show them what government is doing for them. We want to hear from them directly about how this is going to help them, what this will mean. And we want to hear because we want to hear more. We want to know what else we can do to help people in this state right now who are struggling with high costs, who are struggling with affordability. I have said from the beginning that Massachusetts is the greatest state in the country, and it is. We have so much going for us. But we also have known for a while, and I said since the time I ran, that we needed to do something to make our state more affordable, more competitive, more equitable. And thanks to all the partners in this room, today we delivered for Massachusetts. Thank you so much to all who helped make this happen. I'd now like to introduce our Senate President, Karen Spilka. Thank you, Governor. Great words. It's wonderful to hear them. This truly is, it's a historic day in a historic room, in a historic building, and it's a pleasure to be here with all of you to celebrate this bill and this historic tax relief bill. Uh, many of no, you know it took a while to get here, but the bills were comp, the issues are complex, it's, it's thick, tax law is not easy to work through, Those, many of you know that. But I am very happy to be here to celebrate this success. My sincere thanks to Governor Healy for signing this bill and for uh, helping us uh, along the way. Uh, it's going to help so many workers, families, businesses, and on Team Massachusetts, all of us, this, ha, this is a bill that has helped for almost everybody. I want to give a big thank you also to Speaker Mariano for his partnership and friendship 
and your leadership on this bill. Uh, again, it took a little while, but I think that, that the results speak for themselves. I also want to thank Senator Chair Rodericks and Senator Moran, Vice Chair of the Senate Committee on Revenue, for their work in crafting this bill, um, and each member of the Senate for seeing, helping to see this important relief through. I want to also thank Chair Michaelwitz, who, with Chair Rodericks, put a lot of time and energy sifting through all of this, working through all of the proposals, and trying to come out with something that would help as many residents and businesses and communities in Massachusetts, and I do believe that they were a big success at that. As I've said before, I will say it again, when our middle class families succeed, we all succeed in Massachusetts. This historic tax relief is going to help us do just that, succeed. For a low-income household, as mentioned, with two kids, their tax refund check will be at least $1,000 higher. They'll be $1,000 more in their pockets, in their pocketbooks, thanks to the highest universal child and dependent tax credit in the nation. That is really amazing. And for seniors, we all know seniors who are struggling. When I go around our communities, they celebrate the senior circuit breaker. We increased the senior circuit breaker. We doubled it from 1,200 to 2,400 to help seniors stay in their homes, which so many of them want to do. This will make a big difference for them. And this is on top of our investments that our budget has made for working families. Reducing tuition for our immigrant students, making community college free for those over 25 and for those who are aspiring to be nurses in our state. We need nurses desperately. And uh, for the universal school meal, we uh, make that free, affording $1,200 per family per student. As mentioned, if you have more than one student, that also mounts up. That combined with the child uh, and dependent tax credit, with earned income tax credit, rental assistance, and other things, this will be a noticeable, I think, a noticeable amount that people will feel back in their pockets and back in their pocketbooks. So this is real money to help people. The bill will also, everywhere, every one of us here goes, we hear about the needs for more housing. Anywhere in the state, every zip code, every corner, we need more and a variety of housing. This bill will help ease the housing crunch, the housing crisis. <laughs> And that is celebration unto itself. It is heavily, it heavily incentivizes the development of housing units, both affordable market rate and low income housing units throughout the state. This will create thousands, if not tens of thousands of housing units across our state to help people stay here, stay in Massachusetts, live, raise a family, work, give employees to our employer, employers that need them so desperately. For the businesses in our state that invest in our economy and our people, this relief is going to make it easier to spur new growth, build up their workforce, and be more competitive on a national basis. And for our 18 to 40-year-olds who we all desperately need them to stay here in Massachusetts, the bill boosts their rental deduction, commuter deduction, and incentivizes companies to help employees pay their student loans. This bill is real relief that is going to make us more, and you hear these words over and over, almost like a mantra, more affordable, more competitive, and more equitable. And I am so excited to be here and see this bill signed. And I'm even more excited, excited, though, to see the positive impact that this bill will have on our state, 
and all of its residents in the coming years. So thank you very much. Thank you for celebrating this. And I now would like to turn over the podium to Speaker Mariano. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm really happy to be here on a beautiful day, and I'm really happy to see so many people showing up. Uh, it shows, highlights the importance of this piece of legislation that was signed today. And you folks are really lucky today because I had an eight-page speech I was going to go through, but I sat on my glasses <laughs> and, and broke them. So right now you're going to get me ad libbing which is kind of a scary thought. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's it most of the time. Now, listen, I, I want to I, I begin by, by thanking the governor. Uh, the governor has kept our feet to the fire. He really has kept our feet to the fire and, and kept us on the front burner when we had many reasons to question how far we wanted to go and what exactly we wanted to do. And, you know, it was great to have a Senate partner that would listen to arguments, counter-arguments, and the most important thing that gets lost in this debate is the fact that we had two chairmen of Ways and Means, one in the House and one in the Senate, that constantly worked on this bill for almost two years. Two years of trading proposals going back and forth, fine-tuning language, finding common ground on two bills that were desperately far apart. And to bring them into the vehicle that we have here today and we had signed into law today is truly a feat that should be applauded. They worked hard, they worked continually, they worked weekends, they worked nights, they didn't always give up their vacation time, but, but they were here. They were here and they crafted a bill that touches, as you just heard, so many segments of our society. And those fellow reps here today that don't publicize the senior circuit breaker for their district are crazy. Even if you don't pay state taxes, you can get money back. There's no deal like it in government. So there's a lot of things in here that we can pitch. A lot of things that are going to be really important to people. And I see some of our business folks out here. You know, we even managed to sprinkle something in there for them. <laughs> You're a little slow on the uptake, but... <laughs> but anyway. No, it's, it's, it is truly a momentous occasion. As, as uh, the governor said, it's 20 years, or the Senate president said, it's been 20 years since we did anything of this magnitude. And the last time, 20 years ago, it was the voters that made us do it. So this is driven by you folks in the audience, the folks that make the case for different segments of our society that need help, the folks that we want to help, the folks that we were elected to help. So this bill truly reaches out to all those segments of our society in Massachusetts, and I am extremely proud of this. It took us a little while to get here. We had a couple of bumps in the road called 62F and some things that backed us off a little bit. But we did it. We did it because the governor kept pressing. And now we're here today signing it, and everyone's got a smile on their face, and it's a beautiful day. With that, thank you. And I, I guess. No. I get to introduce one of the guys that worked so hard on this. And, and I, I can be a little silly sometimes. But I am not in any way silly about the respect that I have for these two guys that are going to speak next. Um, you know when they're doing things that you would never do, that they're special people. And these guys did it. And with that, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker, I, I think. Thank you. Uh, and, and by the way, isn't it great to have a speaker actually in the house here? Right? So, but thank you all, you know, for having us here on this historic day. You know, it's great to be here on occasion where we can celebrate giving $1 billion in eventual tax relief to the residents of the Commonwealth. Uh, the final product in, that we're signing into law today represents a responsiveness to today's economy and compassion to the needs of our residents of all means. Changes towards the child independency and earned income tax credit will help put money back into the pockets, real money back into real pockets of hundreds of thousands of working families in Massachusetts. Moving towards a single sales system and adjustments to the short-term capital gains, as well as our estate tax, will work to make the Commonwealth a more competitive working environment for all. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and including age dip and low-income housing tax credits will expand, okay, well, <laughs> will expand the construction of housing across the state, something that we all recognize is sorely needed badly. Overall, this is a well-rounded tax proposal that will offer assistance to nearly every resident of the Commonwealth in one form or another. And it was accomplished by a collaborative spirit between the two branches and this administration. There are priorities of the House members all over this bill. There are priorities of Senate members all over this bill. And there are priorities of the Governor all over this bill. There are also many bipartisan priorities all over this bill. This bill that the Governor just signed is not only well-rounded from a policy standpoint, it is also well-rounded from a political standpoint as well. Today's, today's collaboration offers a stark contrast into what's happening over in Washington right now, and it's something we should all be very proud of to be able to get something done today. I, I again want to thank Speaker Mariano for his leadership and his commitment to seeing tax relief become a reality here in the Commonwealth. We are truly lucky in the House to have someone who understands the statewide impacts that this legislation will have but also doesn't lose sight on the individual rep districts and what every member is going to see in, in terms of benefits in their own communities. I want to thank my fellow House conferees, uh, the Revenue Chair Committee, uh, Mark Cusack and Representative Soder, and all my colleagues in the House, uh, and, my, and the House Ways and Means staff in particular, for all their hard work and determination in getting this over the goal line. I want to thank the Senate President and my counterpart, Senator Rodericks, uh, for their willingness to compromise and made, meet us in the middle and work together to see this process through. And I especially want to thank the Governor, uh, Governor Haley and her administration, particularly the Secretary, for giving new life to this tax relief conversation this year and for championing such a worthy cause. I congratulate the Governor on accomplishing one of her top priorities when she first got into office, uh, and, uh, and the, we're just going to hit the ground running on the next one as well. Uh, now, I, it's my honor to re uh, introduce Senator Rodericks, and I just want to say me and Senator Rodericks have done five budgets together now. Uh, we've negotiated bills through a pandemic, uh, and we can add now a tax relief bill to our bucket list. Uh, I always uh, appreciate his willingness to keep trying, uh, even when we hit some roadblocks, even when those roadblocks are of the, the $3 billion variety. Uh, he doesn't give up a trying, and I really, truly appreciate his partnership. Senator Rodericks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, when he, when uh, Chair Mikowitz said we've negotiated five budgets together, countless capital bond bills, SUP budgets, OPA bills, and the like. The speaker says, and you're still talking to each other? <laughs> Not only that, we're still friends, and it's still an honor for me to work uh, side by side with him uh, every day as we do the people's work. And, um, you know, as, as the uh, closing speaker, I don't have a lot of new things to say, so I'm going to get to choose what I think are the highlights and the most important things that you've heard from my predecessors. First of all, uh, the leadership of uh, the Senate President, the Governor, the Speaker, and their respective teams. They've been advocates from day one to ensure that we got this bill across the finish line. To all of you, uh, to all the stakeholders, um, this bill does have something in it for everyone, for our working families, for our low-income families for those that are concerned about housing costs and housing production. We didn't talk about the dairy farmer tax credit. You know, those of us, that's right, let's hear it for our dairy farmer. Not a big component, not a lot of money, but it's critically important if you are struggling as a dairy farmer here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. 
or for our friends and neighbors in rural communities. We tripled the Title V septic system tax credit. Um, we uh, in increased the uh, tax credit for lead paint abatement. Uh, we ensured that uh, employers who helped their employees with their student loan debt, those students, those tax filers don't have to claim that as income uh, on that in their tax returns. So there is a real, it's a comprehensive bill, um, and it would not have happened uh, without uh, the folks behind me, without all of you. I also need to give a shout out to, uh, to my good friend, my minority leader, Bruce Tarr, for constantly badgering me. <laughs> on, uh, for forcing me to sign an IOU during the uh, budget uh, debate uh, back in May, and we delivered on that IOU with, this, uh, with the signing uh, of this pa tax package. So thank all of you. This would not have happened uh, with all, all, all of you. It is a beautiful day, and it's a reason for us all to celebrate. Thank you very much. Well. Great day. Great day here in the Commonwealth. I think we're happy to take some questions on topic. This is a really, really important moment. And I think that, you know, what you've heard uh, from us all along is a willingness to get to this place. We need to address costs. We need to address affordability. We also need to address our competitive state vis-a-vis -vis other states uh, around the country. And I think this, this bill uh, really goes far in that direction. I am really grateful for all the work represented here and out here to make this happen. It's really, really important progress for our state. It's going to make a difference for folks across the state. Uh, it'll make a difference for the business environment. And it's a really, really great day for Massachusetts. No, oh, Massachusetts. Look, you, you do the analysis and you do the work. You see where Massachusetts sits. We're um, we're in a really good place. There's always more things to look at, more things to do. But you know, there's a tremendous value proposition in our state. When you look at our education system, when you look at our workforce, when you look at our ecosystem and what we have with research and our colleges and universities and our fantastic healthcare. Uh, Healthcare, by the way, not every state makes sure that its residents get health care, and that's another value proposition. We're a state that cares about climate and actually wants to make sure that people have clean air and clean water. We're looking to innovate. We're looking to, to, to be, continue to be entrepreneurs, as we have been for the last 300 years. So, you know, we always have ways to, to talk and to work together to enhance and improve opportunity, but I think fundamentally, you know, we're all on the same page. This is about making sure that Massachusetts not only survives but thrives thrives, and doing that means making Massachusetts more affordable, more competitive, more equitable. That's what this tax bill does today. wealth of experience represented here. I don't know what the question was. Yeah. Was, was there a turning point, what, to, to make, have, the, have this bill happen, a turning point? I, I think, honestly, It's like the fifth quarter, okay? It's like right. the fifth quarter, we're going to go unwind. Well, right. Yeah. You, want, you, want? Well, well, you know. <laughs> that, we, that made we, sense to you. Yeah, it did, it did. <laughs> it, it, it. We did hit pause. We began this process, and then we were surprised by the governor telling us we we owed another three billion dollars uh, former governor i'm sorry i'm yeah, sorry I'm, I'm sorry i was surprised too i'm sorry yeah i'm, I'm sorry man i'm sorry uh, the former governor dropped a little bomb on us and at the same time we were getting some readings out of out of the uh financial folks that the potential for a recession was on the horizon so we, using a bit of discretion, sort of slowed the process down and pulled back a little bit. With the change of the election, a new governor, um, having paid the billion, the three billion we owed, uh, we decided that the tax 
levies had been fairly stable, so we could take another look at this. And we would do some things, and, and the House took a little bit of a different approach. We phased some of these tax cuts in, as opposed to the Senate, which put them all in at once. We wanted to be a little bit surer on our, our tax receipts. So it turned out to be all right, and we were able to go forward. So there was a turning point, but there was a few small turning points along the way. There wasn't one gotcha moment, like, we're going to get this done. So. I just want to add that I know many of you doubted us, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I never had a doubt that we would get this done eventually. Uh, I did believe, and I, I knew, uh, and in speaking to the speaker and, and the chairs and others, we all recognized, and then when the governor, the newer governor came in, we recognized that the time was right, that we needed to get this done for the people of Massachusetts. But it was very complicated, and that doesn't mean to be an excuse, but it took a while. And as noted, the two chairs and, and the teams just really hashed it out, stuck with it, and uh, took the time that was needed to help make it happen. Thank you. Thank you. Any more on topic? I'll come right to you. No. I'll come right back to you. Yep. Here first and then back. Okay, then he, he wins. You mentioned the education process. What does that entail? What specifically do you think Well, I think, you know, it, uh, the important thing here now, having signed this into law, is to make sure that it's implemented and then people know what they can take advantage of as we move towards April of, of 2024. And so, you know, one of the things we'll be doing, um, I think all of us, is talking to our constituents, talking to residents, talking to small business owners, talking to farmers, uh, talking to seniors, renters, uh, commuters, you name it, um, about what this bill contains so that they're able to take advantage of it. And, you know, we've all talked about how encompassing this bill is, and, and I hope people really appreciate it. It's a big deal that we did this, Massachusetts. It's a big deal. We haven't seen this kind of tax relief in over 20 years. We got it done. That's something to be proud of. What's really important, though, is what got done and the kinds of relief that are being provided both to individuals and to families, to some of the most vulnerable among us, and to others who are really important in terms of furthering economic development and growth here in the state. So that's that's worth a conversation, multiple conversations, because we want people to be able to take advantage of and benefit from this important law. Well, I'll tell you, the, the situation with the Green Line extension, I've talked about this before, is incredibly frustrating. Um, it appears that, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, speculate right now. I will tell you, as I told you last week, that I have directed GM Ang to get to the bottom of what happened in terms of actual work and the contracts. We are on that. We're importantly on right now making any needed repairs as quickly as possible so that we can get those trains moving as quickly as possible. But we're, we'll be back with more on that. Well, I, yeah, I read about that, and, and let me say at the outset, I'm uh, very distressed to learn that any veteran may have been moved from a hotel who had booked a hotel for that game. Um, as I understand it, those were decisions made by area hotels. I have directed my Secretary of Veterans Services, John Santiago, to reach out to anyone affected. I do understand that those hotels are working with people who had bookings to find other locations that are, in fact, available. Um, but I was very concerned and troubled to, to hear that any veteran may have had their rooms canceled. Yeah. 
Well, I think there's one thing I've learned, Lisa, in the short time, is the legislature will give me guidelines on what I can and can't spend. <laughs> um, look, serious situation. I've talked about it before. We need two things from the Biden administration. We need federal funding and we need expedited work authorizations. There is unanimity uh, in terms of uh, uh, the, the opinion on that. We are going to continue to press for that. And of course, as always, we stay in dialogue with our partners in the legislature about anything that has an impact on the FISC. Again, congratulations to all in the room and grateful to the support of the legislature for making this happen. This is a great day for Massachusetts. <laughs>